Hey friends, it's Nitya with Karma Chameleon. Welcome to all things Chinese astrology and feng shui. And specifically, we often read the astrology of celebrities to better understand our own lives. So today we're going to talk about um, the Flying Stars Feng Shui for July. And this is Yin Earth sitting on top of the sheep. And the sheep itself is Yin Earth. So I am saying the forecast for July is all very feeling beachy, toes in the sand. And yeah, so last month, the month of June, uh, we had all the flying stars doubled, which is pretty awesome when we have situations like that kind of makes things a little bit easier. And you just know that the great areas are amplified and the not so great areas run duck for cover, leave them alone. So this month we have a lot of really wonky areas that are kind of are in conflict because of the way the stars are flying. But um, let's just dive in. So um, I always like to stop and review because it's important to recognize where we're coming from and that each month of a, of a year is really like stringing pearls along. Okay, so you know, we we've, we start all the way with February and we make our way slowly along and now we've gotten to July. And along the way, we have come to this place where the month of June, the horse, really is, it's like two different paces. The horse is really fast, very impulsive, wants to go. The rabbit is like, ah, slow down. Let's take a, another sip of mate. Let's um, have another sip of tea, coffee, whatever. Chill out. And this tug of war, if there isn't compromise, um, can cause some friction. So the question then because I can tell you, June felt like it went by like whiplash, and it also seemed really slow when you looked back at the beginning and saw all that happened. So, um, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I would say things felt overwhelming and intense and moving fast. Some aspects were moving slower than I needed, like getting my refrigerator fixed still isn't happening. Anyway, so all the things of life, there was this feeling of a tug of war, and maybe you were experiencing that in your work or in your relationships. So now we come to this beautiful time of July, and I reference in the blog on the Karma Chameleon website, the Johnny Depp, uh, Bruce Willis reading that I did. Um, few months ago. And um, because Bruce Willis and Johnny Depp both have a day-year combination of sheep and rabbit. And uh, my boyfriend is a sheep rabbit, year day. And so these people are really chilled out. It's a very yin energy, very nurturing energy, very passive, quiet, serene. Mm. So yeah, there's this quality in this pairing for peace and harmony and balance as being really important. As lovers or friends, the sheep and the rabbit are, they're a perfect match, perfect match. So know that July really has this quality of sweetness to it, of, you know, being serenaded by love songs, you know, and I, in, in, seeing this, I'm also reminded that in Western astrology, Venus is going to go retrograde in July. And uh, takes it takes a breath here because Venus going retrograde means that all of our relationships, especially our intimate romantic ones, are going to be reevaluated, tested like we need that. 
And so I know in my insight timer yoga classes that I teach, I've been calling this the summer of self-love. And there really is um, this layering of all these messages, Western astrology, Eastern astrology, and recognizing that if we don't have a clear, beautiful, harmonious love relationship with ourselves, how the hell are we going to attract that from other people? Self-respect, self-love, self-care, all of it. So as I, as I sit in this now moment with you, with you, I want you to really think about yesterday. What did you do for yourself yesterday? What are you doing for yourself today? And what are you doing for yourself tomorrow? And we're gonna boil it down to really the simple steps of life. Are you nourishing yourself? Are you getting enough rest? Do you have healthy boundaries in place? Do you allow in every day, a minimum of 15 to 30 minutes of self-love, however that looks for you. Whether it's taking a, a quiet walk in nature, sitting and looking out the window at the birds at the bird feeder while you're drinking a hot beverage or cool beverage, whatever. Is it um, taking a long soak in the bath Maybe it's journaling. If you don't have these things in place, I highly suggest you do. Because the notion of giving until you are empty serves no one, and especially you. As we go into this quiet pause of a month that's what it feels like to me you know really beach chair under the umbrella facing the ocean uh easy to read book in hand and maybe the company of a sweet friend or love but stress-free serene and tranquil how do you create that in your life for yourself. Um, that really is the anthem being cried out right now. Um, yeah. So let's dive into the flying stars. So like I said, last month, everything was doubled, which makes it a little easier. And this month is a little more complicated. Sorry to say. So the four star uh, we know is in the center for 2023. It's visited by the three star. Now, both of these are wood stars. One is yang, one is yin. And, you know, the conflict here is the wood and the earth of the center aren't in, in harmony. So we've been using fire all year as a mitigator, which is great because it mitigates but it also specifically for the three star helps to drain the negativity the caution here is i wouldn't really change any of the setup the way that we have been using this space for 2023 but the caution is that the three and the four combined can cause a lot of disharmony in our closest most intimate relationships and for that reason You'll see on the blog, on the Karma Chameleon website, be mindful of your relationships. And if things get funky, irritation, arguments, remove your love altar. Remove, like if you don't have an altar because you're the center of your home is a hallway, maybe you just have a picture of you and your love there or a, um, a framed photo of a poem or something, you're gonna to wanna to take these things down and remove the focus being on your relationships. 
All right, so now we're gonna come around from the center to the north, which is one of the best spaces for uh, July. The nine star of future wealth and abundance in the north is visited by the eight star for July. Now, both of these are in conflict. You know, the nine star is fire, the north is water, the eight star is earth. Okay. But the eight and nine together, earth and fire, certainly work together. So we're mitigating here. And one of the mitigations for the north we've been using all year is wood, but then adding a little fire. And that should really be emphasized that um, for July especially, bring in violet, reddish purple colors with the green to create a greater flow of harmony and balance so that you can really benefit. This feels to me like your career because this is your career corner and the nine star of future wealth and the eight star being success and wealth coming together in a way that launches something. Something is moving forward for you. Um, so that's really cool. Utilize this. If this is your office, awesome. If this is a boardroom where plans are, are talked about, awesome. If this is your um, front door like mine, really awesome. Um, one of the great things to have here is a vision board. And I'm actually thinking this out loud with you that one of the things I usually do at the end of the year is I go to my vision board and with a big Sharpie, I circle the things that manifested for me. And I have to say, I am a manifester. When I have a vision or a dream for something, I, I keep my sights up on the possibility of what could happen, taking into account that the dream or vision I have might be slightly changed by the situation and circumstances, but it's still a manifest. Where you want to avoid your mind going is the, the possibilities of everything that can go wrong. As soon as you entertain that, as soon as you think, Jesus, how much worse could it get? Or this is never going to happen. Or how hard do I have to work for this? Why is it taking so long? These negative thoughts tank it. And when you feed the darkness, it grows. The, that's just it. It's the law of attraction. We see it in nature all the time. Try it in your life. So the vision board, this is a great month. Halfway through the year we are now to go and visit the vision board. What's been happening? Are you seeing the results you had set the intention for at the beginning of the year? I know I've already gone and added some things because of how life changes. So I want to go and visit that. It's at the front door. I'm going to go check it out after I finish filming this. All right. So um, that's the, the north. Really potent area. Now we come around to the northeast and this is in a dual because the seven star is here for 2023. That is yang metal. That's like, um, you know, big heavy metal, like a, a building or a train or a plane. And the not, and the six star comes in as a little knife. When you put the two together, the two metal uh, stars together, it's really like a duel. It's a battle taking place. So this is a really an area to be cautioned for violence and for arguments that turn violent, for surgery, for being cut. Um, it can also cut your money. It can be bankruptcies, lawsuits, and things like that. So this northeast corner is really prickly. Look at the northeast area of your home. Is this the office? If so, make sure that it is in harmony. What is disharmony is clutter. Clutter creates confusion and confusion breeds that negativity. And when you've got negative energy moving in, you really want to take care to reduce the clutter. Okay. All right. So, um, 
for the month of July, we're sticking with metal furnishings in all shades of blue and white to help create a, a weakening of the metal, okay? Um, and all the cures, all of this information are on the blog on the Karma Chameleon site. All right, so we come around to the east. This is the two star. This is, geez, man, this is such an area. And I know I've talked about the rabbit this year. And rabbit people, especially if your day is the rabbit, so afflicted. Don't face east. I am sitting facing west. My back is to the east. I'm very cognizant of that when I am arranging meditation cushions for a yoga class or chairs for eating at the table. Who is sitting facing the east is going to be in direct opposition. This is a conflict. This is not a thing to mess with. The eastern rooms of your house should be kept dark, quiet, undisturbed. This includes outside of your house. Part of what is making this such an afflicted area, besides it being, it's kind of like the throne for the rabbit of 2023. Who has the audacity to challenge that space, right? And to recognize the two stars, a star of illness, and um and misfortune so as the the energy shifts for this month we have the one star coming in and the one star is a water star is in harmony here and i would really just continue to focus on the innate colors and materials and element of the east with plants and the colors of green flowers Remove all family photos. I know this is the area of the family, um, but remove all family photos of living family members. Alrighty, so we're gonna come around to the Southeast. This is another problematic area. Yikes, yikes. The three star is in the Southeast, so it's at home here. This is a uh, grumpy energy argumentative and it's met in July with the two star of sickness. This feels like um, it's not as like violent as the five star. This is a little bit softer, should I say? Uh, more like this is illness that is bred out of like a toxic relationship, like stress at home or stress in a relationship or stress at work, anxiety and overwhelm and fatigue, okay? This is sitting in the Southeast. Um, so for 2023, we've been using fire to drain the three star, but for July, no fire. If this is near um, your fire pit or your grill, move them. All right, so then we come around to the south, which unfortunately hits a snag. This has been a beautiful energy this year with the eight star in the south, bringing in wealth and abundance is now met um, with the seven star. And the seven star is a metal star is in conflict here. The risk is that your money um, is tied up in some kind of lawsuit or legal action or you lose money or there's a big fight or, or heated battle in which you lose money, 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 money. And so this is where we really need to take a pause um, and be very mindful of what's going on in your money with your money in relation to um, also your reputation. That's the South. So when we're seeing all of this, what I would suggest is to leave things as, you know, the cures as they have been, but remove all fire, remove the red. Um, actually, I take that back. I would just keep things as they are. And much like the, the center with the four star, you know, 
there's a level of mindfulness that we need to really bring into our day-to-day -day life, despite all the distractions, all the distractions, that we really take a pause and look at what is going on. And when things start to go sideways, as you're starting to feel that, that tilt, pull back. Oh my gosh, what's happening? What is in this area? What can I shift and change? Okay. Um, so what I would say then for the South, just to wrap up there, is if there is something happening negative in regards to finances, and that can be sudden expenses or a sudden loss of revenue, um, to pull any red from the South. So now we move to a happier area of the Southwest with the one star. The one star is um, in conflict with the Southwest, it's water and earth. But now we've got the nine star of future wealth showing up and that's fire, which is in relationship to the Southwest. Um, so it creates this, uh, what do we focus on here? Fire, water, earth, what's going on? And it can get a little funky. Now, metal has been our focus for 2023, but I would say we're going to switch gears for July. And with that, we're going to say, remove the metal, remove the metal for July in the Southwest and focus more on earth tones that are neutral, like cream, tan, and brown. Just keep it very neutral. Continue to use the cures that were in place for this year of a gold ingot or um, a gold happy hody to activate um, that beautiful energy of the one star. Um, all right, so we're gonna come around now to an area that has been good, which is the West. It's where I'm sitting. It's not a happy thing because now we get the crush of the five star in July. This is, um, the only benefit is that the West being metal is weakening the five star. Um, and the six star is at home here in the West as a metal star. So we're gonna really exercise some extreme caution here because the West is in opposition to the East. So it's the rooster against the rabbit. And I've been talking, I think in every one of these videos, monthly videos about the caution of what's coming for September. I, I take great pause here because September is the month of the rooster. Everything's going to come to a wicked head. Um, so the six star of success and wealth met with the five star of everything that could go wrong going wrong. Oh, focus on metal. Just keep all the focus on metal. Be very careful with your business dealings and with your life. If you've got a front door that's in the West, if you have a bedroom, an office, a significant room. Yeah. I would also venture to say if the West is a kitchen, to make sure that you are covering those burners when they're not in use with cookie sheets. Yeah. We're gonna come around last place is the Northwest with the five star. This is the worst area of 2023. The four star is coming in. That's a wood star in the metal area. Um, if this is a bedroom, that you occupy, if this is a room that you hang out in with loved ones, be very mindful of how relationships slide sideways, backwards and upside down. Um, this is really a space to be kept dark, quiet and undisturbed inside or out. Um, the four star really is a caution um, that there's a chance for battles and marriage relationships things like this. Um, so just to recap, best directions, unfortunately, there's only three. The north, south, west, and center. Center is cautious, so it's really only two. Um, it's not the best month. <laughs> Maybe we should all go to the beach. 
Um, all right, so areas of caution, northwest, southeast, east, west, and northeast. And for our world, in the United States, the southwest makes me think of north uh, or New Mexico and Arizona and maybe some issues with border crossing and immigration. Um, for the world, we're looking at um, Brazil, the, the coastline of Brazil specifically and Greenland. So that's pretty much it. It's um, it's a little bit, I would say, of a choppy, choppy waters. So if you're able to get to the beach, good on you. Uh, I don't know that I'll get to the beach this summer, but uh, I wish I could. I'm about to head into six weeks of summer yoga camp. So um, yeah, wishing you all a beautiful month of July. Please um, keep your, your, your questions and suggestions um, positive, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Be well.